right, welcome back to another episode of Guilty of Treason. In this episode, we are going to be reviewing the new Husqvarna 540i battery-powered top handle chainsaw. But first, I want to take a minute to thank our favorite sponsor, Duckworth Wool Company. They are a clothing company right in Montana. Everything's made in the USA. The best wool stuff that you've ever worn. They've got the sheep right there in Montana. It's really great. I'm still wearing this shirt. It's still wearing this from the last video we did. And I, I still haven't washed it. And it still doesn't stink that bad. That should really be their slogan, actually. Uh, Duckworth Wool. It doesn't stink that bad. Go click the link in the description of this video and check it out for yourself, it's awesome. And you know what else is awesome? This chainsaw. I'm excited for this, I just got this. This is the first battery powered chainsaw that I've ever had. Um, I still also makes a battery powered chainsaw which I've tested out, and I don't know, it's kind of funky. I wasn't really into that that much. I've recently kind of hopped on the bandwagon as far as battery powered tool goes at work. Uh, we recently bought a whole bunch of battery powered items and we ended up going with Husqvarna because uh, when I was trying to research the still products, it got kind of confusing because they have like three different batteries that they use for their various you know, battery equipment and it started to get confusing. I went with Husqvarna because it's really easy. You can take, you know, the battery pops in and out. I can pop it in and out of the hedge trimmers or the pole saw, a little blower, and you know, we can exchange stuff between, you know, I buy tools for five different crews. So it's really nice to be able to just, you know, everybody can borrow each other's stuff. We don't have to worry about batteries. So we got this and, um, and, and buying a bunch of stuff is kind of an important factor we can talk about a little bit later because this is an expensive chainsaw and you might want to consider if you're going to be jumping into the battery powered battery powered equipment game it's going to make more sense economically the more you invest into it you know initially you got to buy the charger you got to buy the batteries it's kind of expensive but you know if you're getting the pole saw and the hedge trimmers and all that stuff it really starts to pencil out as far as you know the economics of switching to battery stuff goes so you kind of it comes a better bang for your buck the more you invest into the battery uh, tool market so i've been running this saw for a little bit um, we pu I put this video together over the about, about the course of a month or so. So I tried to get it in a bunch of various different circumstances so you can see how it goes, you know, cutting small branches to big wood, try to, you know, put the saw through the ringer the best we could. And so I'm excited to show you that. I think you're going to like it. And um, this is Husqvarna's second battery powered top handle. They have the 435 as well, which was the predecessor to this. It's a bit smaller, a bit weaker. I've used one of those as well. I like this saw better. And you know, the it, it's an interesting saw that if you take a look at it, the, you know, there are a few things that you'll notice. You know, you notice like if you look at my 200 here, the air filters on the back, this doesn't have anything right there. Instead, it's got this screen right here that will accumulate gunk and you just blow that off, I guess. And look, at, this just clicks in here. And the, the thing you're really going to notice is no pull cord on this bad boy. Nothing there. To start it, all you do is, you know, chain break on. You're going to push this button. It has this eco mode if you want to, like, save battery or something. We don't need that. So you just push that, take the chain break off. This kind of goes down and forward. <coughs> and look at that. It's really easy to use. So, you know, that's a pretty nice feature. It's I'm, the thing that's nice about this saw is, you know, this might be a nice thing. It, it, say you don't run chainsaws that often. It might be nice to have this at your house because then you don't have to worry about the mix, the fuel in the carburetor, stuff like that. You know, maybe you could give it to, like as a gift to your wife or something too so that she doesn't have to worry about all the gas and pull starting it. Like if you haven't started a saw in a year and you go to start it, you know what a pain in the butt that is. So that's a huge plus to this. Easy, low maintenance, you can put it in your garage forever. You just pull it out. You don't have to worry about the carburetor being all, you know, gunked up with, with bad gas or anything. So let's, uh, but let's, let's get out in the field. Let's run this thing for a bit and you'll see for yourself and decide if, you know, this is the kind of tool that you want to get involved with. So, all right, let's go, let's go have some fun outside with it. Right, day one testing out this bad boy so we've got this maple we've just got to prune this back they're building a house right here they don't want so many limbs over their yard I guess so we're just gonna go up 
we're gonna trim a few limbs off and we're gonna test this bad boy out. See, I already sp spilled some bar oil, like always. And so yeah, that, that's the thing about this too. You gotta remember to fill your bar oil up because there's no gas. So see how much battery we got. Looks like I got a full bar. So let's get up there and try this bad boy out in the tree. I don't know if I mentioned or not. It's a 14 inch bar with whatever chain uh, came on it. All right, let's get up in that tree. Sweet. Don't usually get it in the first shot. Yeah, Kevin, if you just start to uh, just start pulling that down. All right, so you notice with this one, see my 200's got one loopy deal on the back. This thing's got two loopy deals. So it looks like I clip my lanyard to this one. And this is kind of nice. You can just see if you can see this. Make sure you can see this. You know, I can just rack it like that. Seems kind of neat. Nice and close to my body. Put this on here for weight. All right, first cut on this bad boy. Chamber gone. I guess I just pushed it. Oh, I just turned it off. Oops. Pull that. Now it's on. Chamber off. This goes kind of down and forward. You get used to that real quick. There we go. Okay. Dick. Okay, I'm gonna try to just peel this. Cool. See how that peeling pulls it away from the fence? Only works sometimes. Try this again. Look at that, not too shabby. I'm all clear. Yep, we're good. The next one. Hey, hey, Kevin, I just want to say something real quick. Kevin, just keep in mind, if you cut this line, I fall to my death. You understand? The one that's taut? The one that's on the tree, right? Yeah, if you cut that, I fall to my death. You understand? <laughs> that easy. <laughs> yeah, the only job where if you kill your boss, you might get a promotion. <laughs> All right, second cut. Okay, egg. It's after it. Ah! 
So see, the, the more wood I can leave on the bottom, the more easily it peels down. You can also do like an open face notch to peel it down, but I don't know. It seems like just letting it peel sometimes works better. Sometimes, I don't know which one works better. It seems like sometimes it'll peel, it'll really hang on, and sometimes it'll just break. Whereas the face always just kind of works a little bit. So, if that makes sense. All right, let's try a little face trap. Man, I'm pushing pretty hard on it. Just tears right through. I think this one will miss the fence. What do you think? Yeah, this thing's nice and light. Okay, headache. <laughs> wow, that was close. What was that, a foot away? That was so close. That was lucky. Hey, can somebody untie my rope from the base? Thank you. Okay, so see how I switched there to double rope, came up single line, you know, really efficient that way. Now I'm going down, switch to double rope, that way I can retrieve my, uh, my line when I'm done. I just throw it over branches. Okay, so it's been like a few minutes, the saw is turned off, uh, no big deal, I just hold the button down, now it's back on. Now I'm at 75% battery. I, I hadn't charged this, so I don't know how much it had when I got it. All right. Oh, no. Come on. Yeah! Man, that's close. Okay. All right, one more. I'm just gonna peel this one. Seems like the peeling works better. Look at that. That went way down. Sweet. I like this little hook thing on the back. Okay, got a big one. Let's hear it. See if I can just slash this. See how fast I can cut it. If the saw cuts slow, this thing will peel down. If it cuts fast, I should be able to just sever through it. Man, dude, this thing's great. I'm matching out the bar here. Oh, if you push too hard, then it cuts down. I was maxing it out there. It felt pretty good. Y'all clear. Ready? Hopefully this one swings a little. Ooh. Yowza. Whoo. These all just barely fit. This is awesome. Kablam. Well, I reckon I'm done with this tree. 
What do you think? Except for the stubs? Okay, I'm gonna take the stubs, Kevin. Yeah. Stop yelling at me. You're not my dad. <laughs> Although you you could be if you wanted. Headache! Am I clear? Let's try eco mode. See what that's like. I, don't know, I didn't feel that. Different. Off eco mode. Yeah, it's better with. I'm not gonna be using eco mode. I like it better without it. I guess. This is kind of nice. I guess if you're really, if you're really in a pinch, I guess. You got that. Can really push this thing pretty hard. I'm really impressed. <laughs> Boing. One more cut. Let's try pushing it, see how that does. <laughs> Dude, it's awesome. It's just a stock chain that comes with it. I think it's like a safety chain too. All right, this tree's done. Yeah, dice it up with this bad boy. Yeah, it does on forest buck mode. Forest buck mode? Yeah. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Chain break? What was that? Chain break off? Well, look what you done and did. Is the battery clicked in? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Use it for five minutes. Eco. Get that off. I don't uh, know what that was. That was bizarre. <laughs> oh, you gotta push forward a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to push forward and down. You get used to it pretty fast. Pretty cool, man. Okay, so already one of the um, kind of downsides I'm seeing is like, I just walked up to this thing and I just grabbed it because I was gonna go move the saw and I just grabbed it like that and I didn't even know it was on, but just by grabbing it like this, you know, the chain spun. So it's one thing to pay attention to with these electric saws, you know, you can't tell when they're on or not. So, you know, you probably got to look there and make sure the chain breaks on. So I can see how um, this saw might be easy to grab thinking it's off. You pull the trigger accidentally. They do have that triple action, you know, that I was talking about. So this has to go uh, forward and then down and then you pull the trigger. So I think that helps so you don't inadvertently or unintentionally pull the trigger. Um, but still, you know, that could be something that could be problematic. Pay attention to that, you know. Uh, don't just assume that it's off because it might be on. Okay, so here's what I was talking a bit about. So, you know, you can see all this electrical stuff. This is what's really cool. You know, I was saying like it's expensive at first, but once you have the charger, once you have the batteries. So here's the saw, you know, I can fire that up. And if I want, I can take this thing right out. You know, I've got this guy. You just hold this button. There's a, you know, pole saw and a stick. The cool thing about this is it doesn't have a drive shaft. It just has a wire that runs in it because it's electric. So this thing is way, way lighter than the gas powered 
you know, saws on sticks. And so, it, you know, it goes with this too. This one already has a battery in it, this little blower. This thing's awesome. You know? <laughs> the, you know, the little head trigger. So basically like all the tools that you would need, you know, on a truck. And they're all really light. Look at these, uh, you know, it just pops out. Got these long hedge trimmers, you know, and once again, this telescope's too. So, yeah, all this stuff takes the same battery. So from a business standpoint, this stuff is pretty slick, like this thing pivots too. Look at that, you get all kinds of cool angles, and it's light, it's really light. So, you know, maybe think about that. That's that's the advantage of the electric stuff. Once you start getting more and more tools, it starts to make more sense economically as far as investing in the, the batteries and the charger goes. But, you know, you see all these tools, they all take the same battery, they all work great. And that's why um, I decided to go with the Husqvarna instead of still. So. <laughs> yeah, not done, Scott. All right. All right. All right. Now I'm done. <laughs> All right. See? You want to use my saw? I use I use liquid energy. Yeah. <laughs> He's a gasser. <laughs> He's a caveman with you, his gas you, chainsaw. You can't huff a battery, man. <laughs> can't what? You can't huff a battery. <laughs> <laughs> you can huff the stuff in it. <laughs> okay, so we're at the end of the day for the first day. So my thoughts are so far so good. I've got one bar left. You know, I really should have had this thing fully charged before I took it out. I wasn't really paying attention to that. I don't know how much juice it had when I got it. Um, I didn't do a ton of work. You know, we pruned that maple and then um, there was like a little plum up front that we cut down. Nothing crazy, nothing to really uh, to show there. So I didn't use the saw a ton. You can see. Okay, so the battery shows two there. And it shows one on the saw. So I don't know exactly how much it has, maybe half, maybe a, a quarter or something. But you know, if you've got two batteries, then you're probably fine. I have an inverter in my truck, so I'm able to charge the batteries pretty easily. Otherwise you might need to find an outlet on the house or something. So maybe it's not good for you if you're like out in the woods or something, you know, you have to have access to, you have to be able to charge it. I think they sell a car charger for this actually. But that's it for the first day. So far, so good, really little stuff. You can see the screen here is starting to build up with a little bit of debris. Remember, this is the, the air filter. Let's see, how, I wonder how much oil I used. I didn't cut a ton. Yeah, a lot of oil left. Um, also, we diced up a bit of stuff on the hillside, so we didn't use the saw a ton, but this was actually kind of the perfect day to test it out, I think, because it was a, you know, kind of a pruning day. Um, That's actually a pretty big tree, but, this, I imagine this will end up being my go-to saw for pruning and then doing big wood. I'll probably keep using the gas one, but it's still early on. I haven't got a chance to put in any big wood yet. And this is just the, the factory chain. So it's not super sharp. It's like the, the safety stuff. It's got the, the two rakers on it. Um, it's like some new chain they came out with. I get so crazy confused when it comes to types of chain. There are so many options. It gets really overwhelming sometimes, but I want to race Jed. He's got a different bar and chain on it. So I'm going to have to figure out if I can put this bar on his saw or his bar on my saw. So we'll experiment with that. Maybe I can get a more aggressive bar and chain on this. But so far, you know, really pretty adequate power. I was, I actually utilized this whole bar for a couple of those cuts and it worked pretty well. If you push really hard, it'll just kind of shut down. It won't like, uh, you know, bog down like the gas powered saws do. So it's actually kind of nice because it, it means it's hard to overwork the saw. If you put somebody that's new on the saw, you know, you know, if you put somebody that's new on the saw, if it's a gas, you know, they can really overwork it. I feel like more easily because the saw won't want to shut down this thing. Um, you know, it's just electronic. It just shuts down if it feels like it's overworking. So I think that's probably pretty, uh, pretty nice. And it actually comes with pretty good dogs. I noticed these dogs are pretty good for just a stock saw. They're they're pretty grabby. So so far so good. That was day one, and uh, we'll try some more stuff and see how this how this bad boy uh, goes. I'll see how long the battery lasts, and then maybe I'll see you know another battery how long it how long it uh, how long it goes. That's really kind of the question, right? How long do the batteries last? But I used it. To, 
you know, for this job didn't take that long, so I wasn't running this off for a very long time. Um, but it lasted the day for me. So let's uh, let's just let's just go home and let's uh, try again. Let's try again tomorrow and see how it does. Alright, so this is the second day running it. So what do we got? I'm down to one one square on this. Hopefully it's enough. Um, we've got this sketchy dead alder right here. Nothing too crazy. Kind of big for the saw, but it's all good. So this thing snapped off right in the middle. There's a house right there. Um, it's not a super big tree, but it's kind of tall and gangly. Um, I'm gonna use my throw ball, throw a line. I'm gonna put a rigging line in this, tie it to that, cut it. It's just gonna fall. It shouldn't reach the house, um, but it'll be on a rope, and then Brian will just lower it down. So not, nothing too crazy. It's a little little dicey, but uh, the tree's not that big. So hopefully we don't run out of battery on this because now we're getting towards the end of it. We just got to get it on the ground, so I don't have to cut it. I don't have to make a ton of cuts. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. And I always flake every inch of rope all the way out like this. That way if there are any tangles, you know, if I just chuck it and I got some tangles in here, the momentum from throwing it will make a super crappy knot. So every time I throw this thing, or I should say every time I take it out of the truck and throw it, like I don't do this every single time I throw it, but every time I take it out of the truck, I flake out every last bit of rope. and. It saves a lot of time in the long run. Man, such crappy weather this week. It's really pouring. And then I flake it all back in. I think this is called Zing It. 2.2 millimeter or something like that. Throw line. I like this because it's just a hair bigger and stiffer. It seems like it tangles up. Not as bad as some of the finer, more malleable ones. All right, so I got the ball. I just take a bite through it like that. And then when I throw it, I'll let go of all these and that'll slip out. Hopefully I can get this. I'm not, not a very good shot. Oh, swing and a miss. If you get a big tangle, don't worry about it. Just try to break it up. Just get it loose. It should come undone. Don't weave the tail back through unless you absolutely have to because once you do that the knot will get a lot worse You can usually get it by just breaking it apart loosen it all up I think I got it. Right, take that off so it doesn't get caught up in the crotch. Tie this on, super easy. I just do a couple twists, pull that tight. A couple more twists, these are all half hitches. I just do that like four or five times. Very, very easy. Okay, Brian, you wanna start pulling that, would you? Cool. Yep, and then undoing it's easy, just undo those twisty loops. All right. it up just try to break it apart any which way you can look at that all unravels and that's just because it gets tangled up in you know in bites and just unraveling it we'll get it out all right let's go tie on that alder 
And before I do this, I need to pull a bunch of slack down. That way when I tie this on, I've got both legs on the ground so I can tie my knot. If I just have just barely enough to pull it through, I won't be able to tie it on. Now we just throw it up in this alder. Yeehaw! All right. Take my tail. Uh, pull this, would you, buddy? I want to start pulling to have a hand on one end of this. Yeah, I'll make sure that so we have something to clip. you don't put it all the way up. One sec. All right, go ahead. So see if I hadn't have pulled all this slack down, then I wouldn't have been able to tie this knot. You know, this end would be up in the in the sky. But now that we got both legs down, I'm just gonna tie a running bowling. I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wouldn't have pulled all this slack out. Now I'm just gonna pull this up. I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's a little dead hemlock twig I'm grabbing too. Hoping that breaks. I reckon it probably will. Whoa. All right. I think we're good. Lock that bad boy off. Now it's hard to tell because this is leaning that way. Maybe this thing is pushing it hard enough that this will fall over that way. I don't know. I'm gonna do a face cut facing that direction. Maybe the butt will push this thing that way. Uh, maybe not, but uh, I won't really be able to. I can't. It's hard to tell exactly um, how you know the tension, the way the tension and compression works. It's hard to tell if the weight of this is uh, of that piece is largely sitting on here or if it's mostly in that tree so if it's really putting a lot of pressure on this it's going to want to fall that way so we're going to try that way first and if when i'm cutting in it starts to open i'll probably just take a step back and let it just crumble apart it's all tied off it's all locked up um we're just going to cut it and let it kind of fall into the line i'm going to try to get out of the way quickly because there's going to be shrapnel falling you know just gonna do a nice big open face cut. So this might work, it might not. I'm gonna start my back cut. And then uh, which way should I run? I think I'll run this way. All right, let's give this a shot. couple of inches right there, a few inches there, cut a little more, it's really not moving much. Oh, this thing's just going to fall straight down, you can feel it. See, I it actually cut through my corner a little bit. So this thing probably didn't have any directional, any, oh, I got <laughs> the world's smallest hinge left. Looks like I kind of cut through that. It's not, 
cut through my corn a little bit. It's not really ideal. This thing's not really gonna hinge anyways though. It's just gonna, it's gonna fall wherever. So I'm gonna try to break it at this point. I'll just put that to the side. See if this does anything. Probably won't. Oh, it worked. Holy crap. Hey, it worked. <laughs> Would you look at that? I'm surprised that worked. Look at all the termite holes. So you saw the weight pushing down on it. Once I started putting wedges in it, it actually helped push it right over the right way. And what this did is it made the bottom trunk fall in that direction. And while in the process of folding this way, that long piece is sliding backwards, getting all the further from the house. By the time the rope caught it, it just kind of shattered because lost all of its momentum. And that's good, that's what we want. Look at this, not a single, not a single hanger. Not a single piece of tree over here. That, that works great. All right, we'll pull our ropes out and we're done. Look at all this tree landed right here, right next to the port wrap. So this is why we, we just locked it off. And then Brian stood over there, um, you know, rather than holding the rope because you got to think about that stuff. If, uh, you know, you got bits and pieces falling and everything, it's best if you can try to, you know, get yourself away from the situation. So everybody's safe, everybody lived and we're uh, we're all we're all good out here. Nice job, buddy. All right, so now we are gonna test out here with inbred Jed. We're gonna we're gonna race. So what's yours called? It's the 540 540 XP. Mine's a 540i. It doesn't actually say it on here, but it's the 540i. So. It's the gas powered version, the battery powered version. Um, I have a different bar and chain on here. Mine's more narrow than his. So his is a, a bit thicker gauge. It's also got a square ground tooth on it. Mine is round filed. It's a smaller tooth. So for continuity, we will make some cuts and then we'll exchange the bars so that we know that we're testing the, so that, you know, so that we know it's all continuous and scientific and all that and then for continuity um jed you want to do just do all the cuts you just do all the cuts and then i'll just film them okay yeah i'd be happy to okay sounds good so all right yeah and then we've got this chunk of fur right here um yeah we'll just do thinner cookies than that but this is really straight grain it's pretty low tapered um i think it's gonna be a good piece of wood so we'll do three cuts, womp, 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 like they do in the timber sports. It should be a pretty good little test. Yeah. Sam, do you want to uh, do a stopwatch for me? Yeah. The guys are just eating lunch here. This is Sam. Okay, so how many cuts do you want with each saw? Three cuts with each saw. Then we flip the bars and chains. Oh, got it, got it, And got it. I okay. think we'll have to change the sprockets too. Okay. And then three cuts again with each other. Right. So that way we're really testing the saw and not that way the cutter and the chain isn't really a factor. Okay. You want me to so. tag it for each cookie or do you want to just. So he's gonna, it? so Sam, he's gonna go cut, cut, cut. So from the time the chain touches the wood mm -hmm. on the first one to when this cookie moves, uh, to when the third cookie slides off is when you stop it. Okay. So it's three cuts, that's the, the measurement. And then maybe just do like a screenshot at the end. So, okay, so the gas, gas first. Gas first, yeah. Dude, this thing is cold. It's cold, okay, so let it warm up for a second.
His uh, his muffler is also saw this off that his muffler is also ported. He put a <laughs> well, ported means I drilled a hole yeah. in the bottom and didn't even get the shavings out properly. So yeah, he's got that going on on the bottom of the saw. All right, no muffler holes in this one. <laughs> yeah. So you got it. You just you just hold the button. Okay. And then take the chain break off. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like revving it like it's a motor. I mean, uh, Just seeing if it's oiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, ready? All right, so th this is the low profile cut for the l electric saw. All right. <laughs> Twenty-six, five seconds slower. Okay, but that's a different bar and chain. Yeah. It's a uh, so let's swatch sw swap the sprockets and try it again. Yeah, these are not. This is not going to work, Jake. But we can try it. What is that? I don't think the sprocket will go on that saw. What is that? You don't think so? The little splines will be different. One says five forty, and the other one says five forty. <laughs> <laughs> this is They're a both... five forty. <laughs> They're both Husqvarna. Yes, but this one burns petrol. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Vintage man uses new tech. Old dinosaur. Sam goes. Gear. Sam dinosaur. goes. Hey, Jed, if if I get my home light running, will you follow through with it? I was like, of course. And he was like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, I want to do like vintage man uses vintage saw. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the dealer needs to take oh, see yeah, these little we can't specialty. Do that. That's complicated. That might be it for the testing then, because the sprockets aren't that easy to change. But I can't imagine by putting the bigger chain on mine that I'd get any power, because it'd be working all that much harder it'd to pull the more metal. Yeah. So yeah, we can just we'll just I guess that'll just be it for the test. Well, okay, so your saw's faster. The gas is faster. Who would have thought? Any thoughts? Any thoughts on that saw, Jed? I, I like it. It's super, it's much. Now, how much lighter? Are we are we thinking about that? Like, how much lighter is that, Davin? So feel that, pig. That's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to, Whoa, it's hard lighter. to say. Way lighter. Way lighter, like by a third, I'd say. I mean, that matters. Power to weight. It is really light. That yeah. I light. can't get over not having the pull cord. That's the awesome part to me. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
you know, if you saw the last video where I brushed this out, I was using my 200, uh, just blowing through these limbs, and uh, this is a bit much. You ready, Brian? Last one. <laughs> Dude. I wonder, is this the same battery as one I've been using? Why it's not liking this tree. There we go. That's it. That's the brush. Get out of here. Okay, so this uh, saw has met its match. This tree, when you get into wood this big, it's just not right. It's not the right saw for it. We need, we need a bigger saw. We need more power. So gigantic, huge, sprawling maple is too much. Plus it's dead, so it's like really hard wood. Um, this tree's like this. They come once in a, a blue moon. Look at the click. I feel like a, a gunslinger when I do that. So trees like this, they come once in a blue moon. They're, they don't come very often anyways. So uh, looks like the battery saw is good for, you know, 90% of trees that you're gonna be climbing. Maybe maybe more, maybe if you're, if you're newer and you're not doing uh, huge trees, it might be a really uh, good saw to pick. Um, but yeah, this was just, uh, this, is too, this is too much, so. We're gonna get a, I, I'm done with the branches anyways. I got through all of them with this, but we're gonna grab a bigger saw and take care of this wood. I, I, I won't bring this saw with me when I'm doing trees this big. at it with this little thing this happens to be a nice carport here for me to park under it's uh it's raining as usual I'm just gonna cut down this uh, it's a dead hemlock nothing to it. it's pretty sm small or medium it's a medium removal um, and we'll use the electric saw and see how it does bucking this thing down in firewood rounds so should be a pretty good tree to test it on so far so good I've, I've liked it not so much on the really big wood but on uh, this size, I think it's gonna be about perfect. One thing I've noticed is uh, the chain is basically always loose. Um, I'll talk about that more a little bit later, but I'm gonna have to keep tight. I, I keep having to retightening the retighten this chain. Um, it's kind of annoying, but let's just get going up this removal. And bada bing, bada boom. Let's see how let's see how she does with some firewood rounds. A dead hemlock. All right. You warm that up? Have you warmed it up? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I want it nice and hot. All right, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Don't overdo it. Sorry, sorry. I got a little. Dude, little yeah. Away with that. Jeez. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, so as far as the branches go, this thing is every bit as good. It's better, better than my 200. And it's better because, you know, I don't need to start it a bunch of times. If I gotta yell down to the ground, they can hear me and whatnot. So these, you know, branches are pretty small. The branches this size. Uh, this, you know, limbing it up, it's really enjoyable. It's really nice for these limbs. They're small, they're easy to cut through. Uh, we'll see how it goes chunking it down, but so far, uh, I would give this the edge over my 200, just as far as, you know, these small or medium-sized branches go. So let's, let's fire with this thing down and see how, how it does. How do I look in this screen? Does it fit well? You look like Looks nice Diana and symmetrical. That's not what I asked. <laughs> that's not what I asked. All right, stop laughing. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to the shop. Hopefully, you like that. I enjoyed putting that together. So, I've been running this off for about a month. You can see it's getting pretty dirty. Um, the vast majority of the stuff I cut has not been in the video. I just had those five days in there. And you can see that it's got, it's gotten pretty dirty. Um, and you can see the air filter right here on the side really isn't that dirty considering I've been using it for over a month. You know, um, So instead of having a conventional filter like on the back or something, it just has this screen that goes over. And to clean it out, all, we're gonna, all we gotta do is just looks like And it's just that easy to clean the air filter. So that's the first time I've done it with this thing. So, you know, using it, I've really enjoyed using this saw. It has its drawbacks. You know, you kind of have to plan to make sure that your batteries are always charged. It doesn't have quite as much power as the gas one. The, a big thing about it, the, the chain tensioner is really bad. Like, I'm really surprised that they make the saw with the chain tensioner that bad. I don't mean like it's a little bad. I mean like it's, it's crazy bad. It, it, the chain is basically always loose. The tensioner is in the cover. It isn't on the saw itself. Here, let's see if I can show you that. So most of the other professional saws I, that I've ran, the tensioner will be on the saw itself. And as you adjust it, you know, that pushes the bar forward, whereas this, the tensioner is on the cover, and that's what slides it back and forth. And this thing, you would not believe at how fast it, if you pinch your bar at all, tug on it at all, the chain comes loose. It's, it's really frustrating for a saw this expensive, which is the third thing, no, the fourth thing I would complain about this saw is, the saw is, it's really expensive for what you're paying for. So you, you're, I paid, six hundred dollars for this saw and you know for that same price you could buy uh, jed's saw which is gas and then you don't have to worry about the charger or the batteries or anything because the charger and the batteries are really what kind of kills you the charger is about 100 bucks or 150 if you want to get the one that charges more quickly or and the battery is going to be about 200 dollars or 300 dollars if you want to get the bigger battery so you know you're looking at at least 900 dollars to run this saw. So, you know, that's, that's a lot of money. You could get, Husqvarna makes a smaller battery powered one, the, the, the 535i, 
and it's $430. Um, so that might be a cheaper route, but you're gonna pay a lot of money for this saw. So, you know, I've listed a bunch of stuff that I can complain about the saw, but the, the truth of the matter is, despite all that stuff, I found that when I'm working, you know, nine times out of 10 when I need to cut something and it's small, I find myself grabbing this. I'm running this saw more than I'm running any of my saws. And I've almost stopped using my 200 completely just because you, I can't really explain to you how convenient it is not having the pull cord, being able to just start this thing, you know, just by pushing a button. It's so convenient, it's so nice. So yeah, there are things that I can complain about the saw, but the, the truth of the matter is, I can complain all I want. This is the saw that I'm using the most at work. I do wish I, I could have gotten a little better of a test when I was racing Jed, um, but the, you saw the sprockets were different and we weren't really sure how to change those out. Um, some people might tell you that this will cut faster than the gas one, but it just won't. It, it doesn't have the same power, and, and why should it? I'm sure, you know, maybe 10 years down the road, I can certainly foresee these electric saws surpassing the gas ones completely, and maybe we just won't be running the gas power top panels anymore. Um, but for now, you're going to get a little more power with the, the 540 XP, the gas one, and that's the same price. So that's about all I have to say about this. I think that was enough. Um, I didn't get all the pruning was the other thing. Pruning with a saw is really nice. Like if you're just pruning a fruit tree or something, you're up there, you can just grab and start this. You don't have to try to do the pull cord when you're up in a tree or hedges, you know, that, that sort of thing. I didn't really record any of that, but you know, I do that stuff at work and the saw is really nice. So I hope you liked that video. Um, I put a lot of work into it and I hope you have a good day and stay safe. All right, thanks. Wait, oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Please like and subscribe. All right, thanks. Yeah. <laughs>